When you hear the word generosity, what comes to mind? I bet you financial generosity. There are so many different ways to, to give beyond your pocketbook. But, you know, I love when God's people come together for a cause and they pull out their wallet and their pay apps and whatever else they have, and they all contribute. And so many times people actually receive more than they actually needed. It's almost embarrassing the generosity that pours out on a person or on a situation. And a good example of this was way back when in Exodus chapter 36. And this is when Moses had just received a download from God on how to build a dwelling place for God called the Ark of the Covenant. And so we're going to start reading about this right now. Moses knows what to do. He's appointed a chief craftsman who was filled with the Holy Spirit to do the job. And we're going to go on from that point. So Exodus 36, verse 2 to 7. Then Moses summoned every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all of the offerings the Israelites had carried to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who were doing all the work on the sanctuary had to leave what they were doing and say to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded us to do to be done. I imagine they were running out of room for all of the stuff. So Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more because they already had more than enough to do the work. Can you imagine? These people who gave all of these goods, remember who they were, they were slaves freed on Passover. You've probably heard of that term. And for centuries, they had nothing outside of maybe a few pots and pans and the clothes on their back. But the night that they left Egypt, their former slave owners gave them stuff just to get them out of town. And they had gold and fine linens and all of this. And this is what the Israelites brought with them to the desert. And then they gave from that the bounty for this project. They gave something that they never had before in order to fulfill seeing this Ark of the Covenant being built. Wow. But you know, the. Uh, at the end of the day, after they gave their offerings morning after morning, uh, they didn't have to do anything else as far as the sanctuary went. They could go do their own stuff. They could go play ball. They could do whatever um, chore they had to do. They could sit around the kitchen table. Well, they were intense, but you know what I mean. Um, their day was their day to do whatever they wanted to do, and their days and their weeks and their months were theirs to do with what they wanted to do, basically. But the craftsmen were a different story. If you go up to verse 2, you'll see that they meant that it says, all the skilled craftsmen who are willing to come and do the work. If they were not con conscripted outside of the chief craftsmen. They volunteered their time, their energy, and their skill set in order to do the job that needed to be done. and it, it took about nine to 12 months, uh, according to different timelines that I looked up. So they, while their fellow Israelites gave generously, there was no time co commitment outside of a few of them who were making some items. But once the call went out, don't break anything else, they weren't making those items. But to make anything requires a sacrifice of time. Let's go ahead 1,200 years, shall we? OK. And we are now sitting with Jesus looking over the temple. And we see people coming and going from the temple, the rich and the famous, the uh, 
clergy, young parents bringing their children to be dedicated to the Lord, hustle and bustle, and it's a very busy place, so you probably didn't notice this one person that Jesus did. It's a little quintessential old lady dressed in widow's garb, but Jesus' eyes were right on her. As she walked, not even aware that Jesus was watching what she was doing, she probably had a cane in her hand. She was probably older. She hobbled across the, the courtyard trying to avoid all of the crowds, hoping not to get knocked over. And But yet, if you looked at her hand, she had something in her hand that she was clenching very close to her chest. And she had her eyes fixed on a goal of some sort, and she finally made it there. And it was the temple offering box where people were expected to um, give a, do a donation for the upkeep of the temple every time that they visited. So here is this little old lady opening up her coin purse. And she carefully, gingerly takes out every coin and drops two coins in the offering. There was nothing else in that wallet. Jesus saw her and applauded her generosity and called her out to the disciples saying, there is a woman of generosity. I believe though that her sacrifice was be beyond those two coins. She could have given two coins for the offering to a neighbor who was going to be walking by the temple, but she chose to get to dress the best she could, get her cane out and get to the temple whatever way that she could. So her contribution meant something to her. And as she dropped those coins in there, she had that feeling of, I contributed and I saw where my sacrifice went. I feel that in 2022, even though we're in this really strange time right now, I still feel that our most valuable commodity is our time. It's so much easier for us to give to a cause than to serve a cause with our time. Case in point, I don't know how many times I have gone to a church or I've watched a church service where uh, the pastor says in two weeks we're going to have a special offering and that offering is going to go for an outreach to help people in our community. People give generously, they're pulling out their pay apps, they're writing a check, they're doing whatever, dropping whatever they can into the offering. And they have more than in enough to cover the expenses. So the next Sunday, the pastor gets up, you guys, we did such an amazing job. We got all the funds we need. Now there's some sign up sheets out in the lobby. Uh, please sign up to whatever volunteer pos position that you would like to do. We need about 70 people to be able to do this. You can hear chirping of the crickets in the congregation as everybody's wheels are d d turning. And the pastor, maybe for three or four Sundays, has got to put out that call, please, we need volunteers for this situation. And usually they would get maybe 75% of the people that they actually needed to be able to do that job. Like I said, Giving to a cause is sometimes so much easier than serving that cause. But I wanted to shout out some of you who I know who are watching this, who live busy, busy lives. God sees you. When you step out of your busyness and stop and give somebody a hug who looks like they need that hug, or you sit down for two or three minutes to just listen to their heart, or you shuffle somebody to the sidewalk, or you mow their lawn, or if you're going grocery shopping, uh, you might ask them, do you need anything? Uh, these acts of generosity and the busyness of our everyday lives now are real acts of sacrifice. And I believe that God wants you to know that he celebrates your sacrifice of time in the same way that Jesus celebrated that little old woman 
who spent her day making it to the temple just to drop her two coins into the offering box.